The main character's name is Lin Zing. Today is exactly a month since the beginning of a relationship with his girlfriend. Lin Zing tells Chen with a smile that he loves her so much. He tells her to wait, soon they will go somewhere to celebrate. The blonde calls Lin Zing, and then another phrase was said. The girl tells him that they are breaking up. She stands with her arms crossed over her chest and looks at Lin Zing arrogantly. He just got dumped. Lin Zing holds out his hand and runs, yelling at Chen not to leave. But then a car rushes past him at high speed and breaks right next to Chen. While Lin Zing sweats with exhaust fumes, the guy driving the car takes off his glasses and says happy birthday to Chen, adding that he was a little late. She throws herself on his chest and asks him why he came only now. She was so afraid that he would grab her and tie her up so nervous. The guy says with a smile to Chen, let's go, now they will go to the center, she will eat at a high-class restaurant, and then he will buy her a present. The guy adds, looking at Lin Zing, that relationships require a lot of money. Tom should look at himself, and as he thinks, he is worthy of a relationship. The guy leaves with Chen, hugging her around the waist. Lin Zing is left standing alone on the street with a bouquet in his hands. Behind him are two people discussing what happened. One of them tells the other that isn't Lin Zing in front of them. The most famous sucker of their school. To prove his love for Liu Yichen, he worked like crazy from morning till night to spend all the money on a gift. The other guy tells him that it's funny. Lin Zing worked so hard, and some major took the girl away in one day. After all, that guy is rich. Lin Zing falls to his knees thinking about how it happened. This is all simply because he is poor and healed. He wonders if his sincerity can be rejected like that. Lin Zing sadly sits on the ground. He doesn't understand why he's curry favor with Chen all these few years. Lin Zing's eyes burn with anger and tears well up in them. He understands that he did all this in order to receive nothing in return again. This starts the restart of the hero's counterattack system. A connection is established with the system. A notification appears in front of Lin Zing with information about him. His name is Xin Ling. Age, 22. Counterattack money limit, $1 trillion. Personal budget, $138. Strength, 1 class. Agility, 1 class. Build, 1st class. Intelligence, 1st class. Xin Ling yells out counterattack limit trillion and system in shock. A map appears in his hand. It has $1 trillion on it. He should spend it as he pleases. No matter how much money he spends, 1% will be credited to his personal account. Xin Ling, shocked, says trillion, he can spend 1 trillion as he wants. The system responds exactly to it. But Xin Ling should take into account that he can only spend the limit of the counterattack during the counterattack. That is, if he is next to the girl. Everything related to personal expenses is paid from a personal account. Xin Ling frustrated says damn. He only has $138 in his account then he needs to spend from the counterattack limit. The more he spends from there, the more money will go to his account. Xin Ling holds a card to his face with a smile and says that the counterattack starts now. A little later in the shopping area of Ida, Xin Ling walks down the street and thinks about that he should first find a companion and try it out. He looks at the line at the tea shop and thinks that there are quite a lot of people standing in it. Here Xin Ling draws attention to a girl in a blue dress. Xin Ling noticed Luo Yaxi, Yichen's classmate. The system reports that a high-class girl has been detected, and the counter-attack process begins. The girl's name is Luo Yasi. Her age is 21 years old. Height, 167 centimeters. Weight, 46 kilograms. When the carrier's increase rate exceeds 90%, 10% of the costs will be returned to his personal account. And when the magnification reaches 100%, he will need to find a new target. Xin Ling approaches Luo Yaxing and asks if she can come for a minute. She answers Xin Ling with a question about what he forgot here. She asks that he again wants her to help him with Liu Yichen. Without waiting for an answer, Luo Yaxing tells him not to hope. She advises him to give up. Liu Yichen has already found a rich boyfriend. Xin Ling laughs in response, saying that she is wrong. He only wanted to offer her tea. Xin Ling thinks to himself that he will first try out a new skill on her. She asks in shock that Xin Ling decided to offer it to her. She says no, they don't even know each other. Yuo Yaxing says that in addition, Xin Ling is worth a close look, it is not an ordinary tea. Above it hangs a sign that the cost of tea is 199 yuan for one glass. Yuo Yaxing says that one glass of this tea costs as much as 10 servings of Xin Ling fast food. She asks him if he is sure that he can afford it. People behind Xin Ling tell him to pay or leave. There is actually a queue. The girl talks about that she still needs to send a picture to her boyfriend, and he delays them. Xin Ling tells everyone to calm down and wait one second. Xin Ling puts his hand on the counter with a smile and asks the saleswoman how many glasses will be left for the whole line. The girl replies that about 180 glasses. Xin Ling says great with a smile. He pulls out a card saying he's buying all those 180 glasses. And Xin Ling adds, saying that if anything, then Luo Yaxi treats everyone. The people in line are shocked. 
Yuo Yasi is also shocked and says that all these portions cost several thousand. Xin Ling should think carefully and not be weird. Xin Ling does not answer her, tells the saleswoman that she pays with a card. The girl tells Xin Ling that he only has 39,800 yuan. Xin Ling with a smile asks the girl to hurry up and serve tea to the guests and not keep them waiting. She says yes, yes. The people in line are shocked and say that Xin Ling really bought everything. The girl says that Xin Ling is very handsome. One girl wonders if he has a girlfriend. The degree of Lio Yaxi's enthusiasm is gradually increasing. Xin Ling tells Lio Yaxi with a smile that there is one more thing she needs to help with. She asks him with a smile. Xin Ling asks her to help him spend the money. At this time in a luxury shopping mall, there is a pink bag in the window, worth 18,890. Liu Yichen's boyfriend tells her that he also thought to buy this bag for her. It's just that his mom said he was spending money too recklessly, and they'd already bought enough today. Liu Yichen is standing next to him with bags in his hands. Her boyfriend continues by talking about how they should go out to eat and then talk about everything else. Liu Yichen frustratedly picks up the bag. Her boyfriend tells her that if she wants a good relationship with her future mother-in-law, then she needs to show herself in a better light. To which Liu Yichen replies that then they will not take the bag. To herself, she thinks that without this bag, this whole set of gifts does not look complete. But in order to enter the upper world, she must correctly place the nets and catch a big fish. Then she hears someone ask Xin Ling how he likes this bag. Liu Yichen's eyes widen in shock. Lai Yaxi takes the silver bag and says that it is from a limited collection. It costs 380,000. She asks Xin Lai if he would mind if she buys it. Liu Yichen, hearing this, becomes angry. Xin Ling looks at the bag and says hum, let's see. Liu Yichen yells at Xin Ling and Lai Yaxi what are they doing here? She crosses her arms over her chest with a smile and tells Xin Ling what she understood. That one is still being played. The fact that she left him did not convince him, and he asked Lio Yaxi to play along to piss her off. Didn't she tell him that they broke up? Liu Yichen asks Xin Ling why he is so disgusting. Xin Ling asks her back about who cares about her. He's just buying a bag for another person. Liu Yichen yells back at him that he came to Germany just to buy a bag. She asks if he could have found a better excuse, calling him an unfortunate liar. The system reports that the counterattack process has begun. Xin Ling tells Liu Yichen with a smile that since they broke up, he doesn't have to explain anything to her. He goes where he wants, Xin Ling adds, telling him not to tell him. He asks Liu Yichen what she thinks he is the same as before. Liu Yichen says with a smile how funny it is. A few hours passed. Did he really get out of poverty and become a millionaire in such a time? The system tells him that her engagement rate is minus 25%. The guy next to her tells Xin Ling, calling him brother, that he shouldn't lie. If that were true, he would have already bought this bag. Xin Ling says with a smile that he should think about it. Here he laughingly says that he really cannot afford this. He will have to refuse. He says that buying just one bag is not enough. He calls the seller's girl to him. Xin Ling raises his hand, asking him to pack everything in this store for him. The seller girl is shocked, and Lio Yaxi widens her eyes in shock. Liu Yichen also opened his mouth in deep shock, thinking to himself what? Xin Ling tells the shop assistant that he buys everything from this store. Lio Yaxi stands behind him, clutching his arms to his chest in shock. Liu Yichen and her boyfriend stand behind her and look at them in complete shock. The seller girl with a smile brings the terminal to Xin Ling, telling him that it has 11,320 zero yuan. Liu Yichen's boyfriend tells Xin Ling that if he buys all this, he will eat a load of shit. Liu Yichen yells at Xin Ling that he has gone mad. Xin Ling puts his card to the terminal. It is reported that the purchase was successfully paid. He spent 11,320,000 yuan. The vendors behind him rejoice, thanking him for the purchase. Xin Ling says that he did not know that Wang Xiao had such talent. At the same time, he will see something new. Liu Yaxi presses his hands to his mouth in shock. Liu Yichen's boyfriend yells that Xin Ling really bought everything. Liu Yichen stands with his mouth open. The system informs that Liu Yaxi's infatuation system for him increased by 40%. She throws herself on his neck with the words Dear, you are the best. Xin Ling replies that he is not like some feigning deep feelings. But in reality he is not ready to spend even a cent. At the same time, the system tells Xin Ling that her degree of infatuation with him has increased by 30% and Luo Yaxi's engagement rate, 42%. Liu Yichen's boyfriend screams in shock how Xin Ling got the money. A little later, Liu Yichen tries to talk to Wang Xiao. He says to Chen, he knows much more than ordinary people. Only complete fools who want to ruin their fortune would brag like that. And he, as a real major, must be restrained. At this time, Luo Yaxi stands and hugs Xin Ling, looking at them. There is someone calling Wang Xiao. It's a heavyset woman standing right behind him. He turns his head in horror. He asks Wen what she is doing here. In response, she hits him on the cheek with her palm, calling him a bastard and asking about what he is doing here. 
She gave him clothes, shoes, watches, even bought a car, and he secretly got himself a girlfriend. She calls Wang Xiao a noob whose life is worse than a dog's. Wang Xiao falls to the floor, and then he gets on his knees and crawls up to Wen, saying that he was wrong, really wrong. Wang Xiao adds that it's all because of her, referring to Liu Yichen. Wang Xiao hugs Wen's leg, saying that he only has her in his heart. She must believe him. Liu Yichen says to Wang Xiao in shock. People behind her start laughing and telling lies more. Not only is this guy with a dog's heart, but he's also sucking up to a rich old woman. Wen points his finger at Liu Yichen and tells Wang Xiao that she cannot forgive him. But she'll give him a chance if he gives this person two slaps in the face. She adds that otherwise from now on they part with her. Liu Yichen shouts in shock. Wang Xiao immediately punches her in the face. Liu Yichen falls to the floor in shock, holding his cheek. Wang Xiao tugs at the chain around Liu Yichen's neck, calling her a selfish woman who steals other people's boyfriends. All her necklaces are bought by him. Liu Yichen casts a hopeful glance at Xin Ling, who is still in Liao Yaxi's arms. Liu Yichen stands up and throws Xin Ling on his chest, pushing Liao Yaxi away from him. Xin Ling walks away from her, brushing her shoulder. Liu Yichen falls down from this and says Xin Ling in shock, looking at his back as he walks away from her. Liu Yichen then gets up and runs away, and the system reports that her degree of infatuation has increased by 1%. Xin Ling thinks about the fact that he was cold towards Liu Yichen, and the degree of her infatuation has grown. Wen takes Wang Xiao by the ear and tells him that it's time for them to go back. Liao Yaxi hugs Xin Ling and says that she didn't think that Wang Xiao would turn out to be such a person, she is very sorry. She thinks to herself that Yichen is such a bitch, will it make Xin Ling feel better? He answers Liao Yaxi with a smile, saying that Liu Yichen is selfish and does not deserve sympathy. He asks Liao Yaxi to forget about Liu Yichen, and asks if she wants anything else. Liao Yaxi thinks about what looks like Yichen is out of the game. Out loud, Liao Yaxi tells Xin Ling that he is so kind to her, she doesn't even know how to answer him. Xin Ling asks Liao Yaxi if they can get closer then. The system reports that Liao Yaxi's infatuation rate has increased by 20%. To himself, Liao Yaxi thinks about what Xin Ling is saying. The system reports that her engagement rate is 62%. Liao Yaxi hugs Xin Ling's hand and says that in order not to be rude, as a sign of gratitude, she will also spend money for him. Xin Ling asks her in shock that she will spend money for him. Then he notices beautiful t-shirts to his right. Liao Yaxi takes him to the fitting room, telling him that they should go, she will pick up his clothes. Liao Yaxi puts Xin Ling's shirt on and buttoning it up, telling him to look at himself. If he doesn't know how to dress properly, people will underestimate him. Liao Yaxi puts the goods on the checkout and says that she needs these few. She pays for the purchases. Her payment was successful. She spent 38.88 yuan. The payment was successful. 33.99 yuan was spent. The payment was successful. 28.88 yuan was spent. Xin Ling walks out of the fitting room, adjusting his new raincoat. All the girls in the store immediately pay attention to him, smiling at him and thinking about how handsome he is. The system reports that Liao Yaxi's infatuation rate has increased by 10%. Liao Yaxi thinks to himself that he did not expect Xin Ling to be so handsome. This guy is definitely a treasure. Her degree of attraction is 72%. Liao Yaxi thinks that since Liu Yichen didn't appreciate Xin Ling, she's better off. Xin Ling looks at his reflection, noticing that he has suddenly become more handsome, and all the money he spent was sucking up. However, Liao Yaxi spent as much as 7 or 8 thousand before him. At night in the women's hostel, Liao Yaxi returns to his room 504. Liu Yichen is sitting there blow drying his hair. Liao Yaxi puts his hands to his face and asks Liu Yichen if she is okay. She straightens a strand of hair behind her ear and says that everything is fine with her. Thanks to Xin Ling, she saw Wang Xiao's real face. Without this, she would have lived only dreams. Liao Yaxi tells her that yes, thanks to Xin Ling, she has matured. She shouldn't date people like Wang Xiao. She holds up the bag in front of her, saying that this bag. Liu Yichen tells her that Xin Ling bought this bag for her, so she better keep it for herself. Liao Yaxi hugs her thanking her and saying that she was afraid that Liu Yichen would be against it. She in response asks how she can be against it. They are girlfriends. To herself, Liu Yichen thinks about how she dated Xin Ling for three years, how Liao Yaxi dared to interfere in their relationship. The same one, as if reading her thoughts, thinks about what prevented Liu Yichen from staying with Xin Ling and not being led to the rogue major. Now Xin Ling belongs to her. At this time in the men's dormitory, Xin Ling walks down the corridor and thinks that he has been shopping all day and is very tired. He thinks about whether he should spend again for the sake of sucking up or whether he should change the way. There are three guys coming down the stairs. Xin Ling is talking about guys. One of the guys, Wang Jian, tells Xin Ling that these clothes cost a lot. The other two guys think that Xin Ling must have bought a fake to show off that he is a major. Xin Ling is poor, but demanding attention. 
They've seen a lot of them. Here Wang Jian puts his arm around Xin Ling's shoulder, talking about what he heard about what happened today. Wang Jian tells him that he thinks he spent too much money on courting Liu Yichen because he got kicked out anyway. He asks Xin Ling why he doesn't just donate to the streamers. At least they show more attention. The other two guys talk about how it doesn't matter how much Xin Ling spends on a streamer. She will still love them all. And this is affordable even for an ordinary guy. All students are watching, you can just sympathize. Xin Ling realizes with a smile that he can donate to streamers. And then he brings his phone to his face. Xin Ling puts his hand on Wang Jian's shoulder, saying thank you, chief. When Xin Ling leaves, the guys say that Wang Jian played a trick on him, and he thanked him. They come to the conclusion that henpecked people really have something wrong with their heads. One of the guys in response to these words says that it is not interesting. They better watch the streamer Chai Chai. He says that Zhu Xiao win on the air. Wang Jian, after these words, screams the truth and to be given a look. Xin Ling's room is a mess, with clothes and leftover food lying around. Xin Ling lies on the bed and looks at the phone. The phone screen says that the installation of the Leopard Fang application is completed. Xin Ling thinks about what nickname he should come up with, and he decides that he will call himself a beggar. He decides to see where the list of streamers is in the application. Xin Ling does not understand why there are only ratings, in which no one is online. Xin Ling is watching the live broadcast for the first time. Xin Ling searches for Chai Chai, thinking that the guys seem to have mentioned her name. Then a girl in purple lingerie appears on the screen, who winks and says I love you. Many users write laudatory comments to her on the broadcast. Xin Ling opens his mouth as he watches her and thinks that she is very attractive. But Xin Ling wonders if he can launch a counterattack from the other side of the screen. The system tells Xin Ling that the appearance must exceed 80 points, otherwise the counterattack will fail. The system also reports that streamers have filters on their faces, so it is impossible to determine their appearance before meeting offline. Xin Ling thinks this is very smart. The system really thought of everything. He thinks that Chai Chai looks over 90 points, even with the filter turned on. Xin Ling comes to the conclusion that it doesn't matter. Anyway, his purse of fawning will never dry up. Then he receives a notification that while watching the broadcast of Chai Chai, a user with the nickname Zhu Xiao gave her X5 Golden Leopards. Chai Chai says wow and thanks Zhu Xiao for the gift. Other people watching the broadcast write that Zhu Xiao is cool. Zhu Xiao is currently sitting on his couch smoking a cigarette. Level 24 Zhu Xiao writes about the competition coming up soon and asks if everyone is ready. Jian Wang level 15 answers ready. He thinks that it must be his head boy, Wang Jian. Xin Ling wonders how to send a gift in this application. Zhu Xiao writes that their opponents can not come up with as many useless tactics as they like, pick up the pace, and so on, but he tells everyone. Wang Jian texts the rest of the users to keep quiet as Zhu Xiao is speaking. Xin Ling happily thinks that Wang Jian seems to be an obedient dog as he watches this. Zhu Xiao writes that first of all, they don't look at the tactics of their enemies and don't save power points, but give everything to him. Here Xin Ling writes to Chai Chai about how much money he needs to transfer to become top one. He should first buy gifts or stickers. Zhu Xiao sends back. Jian Wang texts Xin Ling about who he is. How dare he open his filthy mouth while Zhu Xiao is talking. Zhu Xiao writes Chai Chai to get Xin Ling kicked out. He's angry. Chai Chai sits and looks at the screen of her phone and thinks that she can only win this competition thanks to Zhu Xiao. And this newcomer had obviously just signed up and didn't send her any gifts. And her competition with Shuang Shuang will begin soon. Chai Chai thinks about how the beginner's tongue is boneless. She tells the moderator to kick Xin Ling out. Tom receives a notification on his phone and he is shocked to realize that he was thrown out. Xin Ling thinks okay and decides to go watch Shuang Shuang. Competition between Chai Chai and Shuang Shuang. Chai Chai tells Shuang Shuang, calling him sister that Shuang Shuang doesn't have a single top donator and she worries about her. She asks Shuang Shuang if she will give up right away. She will come up with an easier punishment for her. Shuang Shuang crosses her arms and tells Chai Chai that she thinks that if she has the top one, then she is the coolest. She has a lot of good donors. Shuang Shuang tells her not to talk and to start the competition as soon as possible. Between Chai Chai and Shuang Shuang, the competition begins. The first stage will be completed soon. Chai Chai has reached 586,000 so far, while Shuang Shuang has reached 221,000. Here, all the Chai Chai supporters demand that Shuang Shuang accept defeat and dance. She speaks well. But then a notification comes that a user with the nickname Beggar sent Shuang Shuang a golden dragon. Shuang Shuang opens his mouth in shock. Zhu Xiao, also seeing this, shouts into the phone that, now send a golden dragon for 15,000. Shuang Shuang thanks the beggar for the dragon, showing him a heart gesture. Chai Chai wonders if this is the same beggar. Xin Ling looks at his phone with a smile and thinks that he has finally found the most expensive gift. It will be enough for him if he continues to give it. 
He didn't think his card could connect to streaming services. Xin Ling thinks the bets are off it's time to play the fool. Then Xin Ling starts sending Shuang Shuang golden dragons. Other people don't understand where it came from. Xin Ling sends Shuang Shuang 5 golden dragons. Then 10 golden dragons, then 20 golden dragons. Chai Chai opens his mouth in shock, and Shuang Shuang also opens his mouth, but with joy. Chai Chai has 586,000 points and Shuang Shuang has 521,000 points. Shuang Shuang looks at his phone and says stop, let the rich beggar wait. She's so surprised she forgot. She yells at Xin Ling that sending golden dragons is very expensive. Maybe he will wait until the second stage begins and then he will send. Zhu Xiao writes to the beggar that he remembered if he was the same newcomer who was kicked out of the Chai Chai stream. Zhu Xiao thinks to himself that he is a beginner, he is a beginner. He did not understand the rules of the competition and now he sends gifts at random. Other users start laughing at Xin Ling in the chat. At the same time, Shuang Shuang sends x80 golden dragons, x120 golden dragons, x160 golden dragons, x200 golden dragons, x240 golden dragons, x320 golden dragons. All users are shocked that the flow of golden dragons does not stop. It goes up to x860 and then increases to x1600. Xin Ling looks at the phone screen with a smile. Zhu Xiao thinks in shock that the flow of golden dragons has finally stopped. He watched Chai Chai one year send her more than 3 million, and the beggar about 16 o golden dragons, which is 24 million. Chai Chai sits in his chair in shock, while Shuang Shuang dances for joy and shouts thank you rich uncle. She thanks him for the golden dragons, and Xin Ling shouts that she loves him. In her chat, a discussion begins about who the beggar called the user a jerk, and for sure his rivals are now sorry. Shuang Shuang asks Chai Chai why she is sitting. She got her skirt wet. In this case, she should accept defeat and move on to punishment. She continues by saying that the big pendulum, the tilt and roll, the horse zigzag, the jumping jack, Chai Chai has to do it all. Chai Chai thinks about something and smiles. Chai Chai jumps, telling the rich man, calling him master, that she was wrong, she shouldn't have kicked him out. Chai Chai, while carrying out her punishment, thinks about how angry she is. If not for Zhu Xiao, then those 16 oh golden dragons would be hers. She is so tired. The beggar writes that he offers Chai Chai three options. She throws Zhu Xiao, Zhu Xiao leaves on his own, Zhu Xiao handles himself, there are still 20 seconds left. Other users are pleased with his perseverance. At this time, Chai Chai has 586,000 and Shuang Shuang has 24,221,000. Here comes a notification that Zhu Xiao has left the broadcast. Everyone is immediately taken to discuss it. The competition is over, the winner is Shuang Shuang. She thanks her rich uncle for helping her win the competition. Here, Xin Ling's phone receives a lot of notifications. Jian Wang writes to him that he deeply apologizes to him. He was blind and naively mocked him. He asks him if they can become friends, even brothers. Shuang Shuang texts him thank you, she doesn't know how to thank him. He can add her and she sends him the number. Chai Chai writes that right now she wanted to kick Zhu Xiao out, but he left on his own. Can the rich man forgive her? Chai Chai writes to Xin Ling that his data says that he is from Huo Zhang. What a coincidence. The day after tomorrow she is just going there for a photo shoot. She asks Xin Ling if they can meet at the same time somewhere. She thinks about how she feels so bad about winning Shuang Shuang. Appearance, figure, where is she worse than Shuang Shuang? But she is afraid that the rich man will become squeamish about spending money on her if she meets him offline. Xin Ling looks at the phone with a smile and thinks that is also good. There is little work, and the compensation that he was given is not enough. And then the fish itself got caught in his net. He answers TT is possible. She laughingly thinks she knew it, and happily kisses the screen of the phone. She writes to Xin Ling that they will see each other the day after tomorrow. She will be waiting and sends him kisses. Xin Ling wakes up and stretches in bed, thinking that he has never slept so well. The time is 7.35 and he receives a new message notification on his phone. Xin Ling picks up the phone, and his neighbors are already up and calling him to breakfast. Xin Ling tells them to go and the girl will bring him breakfast. Immediately, all three guys in shock open their mouths and look back at her. They get together in a group and discuss that Xin Ling has just woken up and is already talking nonsense. It is said that Liu Yichen broke up with Xin Ling quite recently. Xin Ling was so calm last night. They thought he was fine. One of them talks about how Xin Ling can be okay when he ran after Liu Yichen for three years. The third guy says that we should take Xin Ling to a bar. Let him get drunk and tell everything. Then Xin Ling will get better. Later at the entrance to the women's dormitory. On the street there are four guys with packages in their hands. One of them asks the others about what they also brought tomorrow for the girls. One of the guys answers him that yes, he brought breakfast especially for the beautiful Liu Yichen. The other guy says that he brought tomorrow especially for Liu Yasi. The fourth guy says that's just a coincidence. One of the guys asks the others if he saw Liu Yichen's story. 
She is free now. According to rumors, she was abandoned by Wang Xiao and is now quite vulnerable. If someone gives her a good gift, she will not resist. In the status of Liu Yichen it is written that tomorrow a new life begins. Down with the past, no more relationships. And Luo Yassi's status says, if you turn around, then the person you have been looking for all your life will be behind you. One of the guys says that Luo Yaxi must have noticed him, because he was always there and therefore posted this post on social networks. Another answers him that this is nonsense. This post is about him. Wang Jian comes up to them and coughs. He has a box in his hand. The guys say the headman Wang Jian. He asks them about how they differ from heels. He tells them to look at Xin Ling. Being a heel is not an option. The guys don't understand who Xin Ling is. This is the guy who ran after Liu Yichen for three years. Some of the guys wonder if the headman didn't come to give breakfast to Liu Yaxi too. Wang Jian laughs at them saying that what they have in their hands they call breakfast. He raises his hand with the box on top of them and says that they are French milk sweet pasta for 600 yuan each. One of the guys admiringly says that that is so expensive. Doesn't look like breakfast. Wang Jian says that he understands. Courting a girl requires money. If you spend 10 yuan a day on a girl for a whole year, then the girl will simply consider him a beggar. And Wang Jian spends 100 yuan a week, and the girl will belong to him. One of the guys in response says understood. Understood. Someone is shouting that they are coming down. Liu Yichen and Luo Yaxi walk up the stairs hand in hand. The guys look at them embarrassed and admiringly with their mouths open. They think girls are very beautiful. Someone tells Chen that he bought her breakfast. And another bought Luo Yaxi's breakfast. Wang Jian tells Luo Yaxi that she is even more beautiful than yesterday. He holds out the box and says that he bought her real milk pasta. Liu Yichen tells the guys holding the bags that she has already ordered delivery, so she doesn't need breakfast. Liu Yaxi accepts a box of pasta from Wang Jian, saying thank you. One of the guys looks at the happy Wang Jian admiringly and says that he really gave breakfast to Liu Yaxi. No wonder he is the headman. Then Wang Jian notices several guys in the company of Xin Ling. He yells at Xin Ling that he has just arrived. Liu Yasi is standing next to him holding a box. Wang Jian asks Xin Ling that he also brought breakfast for Liu Yichen, even though she dumped him yesterday. One of the guys next to Xin Ling says that this Wang Jian is back. The same continues, saying that since Xin Ling has been chasing after her so hard for three years, then this should not be a problem for him. Then one of the guys behind Wang Jian tells him that Chen Chen has already ordered delivery. Wang Jian says exactly. It looks like it's not working out today. Xin Ling come back early tomorrow. Liu Yasi then approaches Xin Ling and asks if he had breakfast today. Xin Ling says no. And he asks that Liu Yaxi in response if she offered him food today. The guys behind Xin Ling rub their eyes in shock. Not believing that the girl brought Xin Ling breakfast. Is Liu Yasi in front of them? Wang Jian and the guys standing next to him open their mouths in horror at such events. Liu Yichen also looks at this and thinks angrily of Liu Yaxi. At this time, the courier hurries to her with all his might, telling Liu Yichen that he brought her delivery. Liu Yasi says Xin Ling is excellent. The degree of her passion increased by 7%. She hands Xin Ling a box and tells him it's a dish from France. He should try milk pasta. Xin Ling admiringly says dairy. He thinks to himself that Liu Yaxi prepared breakfast for him and the degree of infatuation has grown. Liu Yichen walks up to them and pushes Liu Yaxi aside, telling Xin Ling that she bought it especially for him. This is a natural dish for 368 yuan. Yesterday she behaved badly, but now she will take good care of him. Xin Ling doesn't know what to say to that. Liu Yichen throws herself on his chest, saying that she knows that all these three years he has done too much for her. Xin Ling bought her a lot of food. She is really touched by it. Just yesterday she was fascinated and deceived by another person. Liu Yichen asks Xin Ling if he can forgive her. He thinks to himself that this performance is again from Xin Ling. During these three years, he was completely disappointed in her, and now she soothes him like this. But once he starts sucking up to her again, Liu Yichen will start avoiding him. Does Liu Yichen think that he is still attached to her? Xin Ling turns around and walks away from Liu Yichen, telling her that why would she cling to him like that, unless she sees that there are a lot of her other fans nearby. Liu Yichen, after these words, thinks admiringly that Xin Ling, as always, does not mind that she has many fans, and even cares about her image. The degree of her passion is increased by 50%. Liu Yichen thinks that Xin Ling definitely loves her. After these words, Liu Yaxi thinks that Xin Ling pushed Liu Yichen away. Previously, her trick would have worked flawlessly, but now it does not work. Liu Yaxi's infatuation rate is increased by 10%. She thinks that it's definitely because of her. Xin Ling is shocked to think about why the degree of infatuation of girls is constantly increasing. He does not understand. The other guys stand there and think in shock about what is happening. Liu Yaxi and Liu Yichen howl for Xin Ling. 
Aren't they best friends? Liu Yaxi hugs Xin Ling and asks him to eat her breakfast. Liu Yichen tells Xin Ling to eat her breakfast. The same one falls on the bench. Liu Yichen leans over to Xin Ling and asks him to open his mouth, offering him food. Liu Yaxi angrily calls out to his friend. Wang Jian clutching his head in shock screams that this is impossible. How Liu Yaxi and Liu Yichen can fight for a man. Yes, and fight for Xin Ling. He does not understand why it happened and how he could do it. Xin Ling tells him that he can therefore and raises his middle finger, saying that yesterday this finger pressed the screen more than 16 times, and the nail broke. It's good that there are those who will take care of him. Liu Yichen immediately asks Xin Ling about that his finger hurts. She can look. Liu Yaxi hands Xin Ling pasta, saying it's delicious. The guys behind Wang Jian look at all this in shock, filming it with their phones. One of them says that Liu Yichen and Liu Yaxi share breakfast with Xin Ling, especially Liu Yaxi who wore such a short skirt and also sat in front of Xin Ling at such an angle, it's impossible. Xin Ling sits quietly eating pasta. Everyone is shocked at what kind of news it will be. Liu Yasi asks Xin Ling how he likes pasta. From smacking, he replies that it's okay, but he doesn't like red ones. Liu Yasi says the pasta is actually pink. Liu Yaxi says with a smile that Xin Ling didn't like them. Liu Yichen yells at Xin Ling to eat his breakfast and not look at them. Liu Yaxi whispers something in Xin Ling's ear. And after that, Wang Jian bleeds from his mouth. Someone yells to call an ambulance. Wang Jian is carried away on a stretcher by paramedics while Xin Ling eats food handed to him by Liu Yaxi and Liu Yichen. A photograph of these events appears on the school board with the caption that this is amazing. University Beauty and her friend eat breakfast together with Xin Ling. And immediately under this news discussion begins. Also on the school board is the news that in yesterday's competition, the streamer received gifts worth 24 million yuan. And also this news is actively discussed by users. Then one of the guys points to his phone and shouts to Xin Ling that he is on the news. They want to interview him. Xin Ling spits out pasta, yelling that this can't be happening. Xin Ling yells that he's off. Liu Yichen and Luo Yaxi stretch out their hands after him and shout Xin Ling. Liu Yaxi angrily tells Liu Yichen that Xin Ling is a major who likes to be in the shadows. He does not want to show himself in public. It's all Liu Yichen with her gossip. She upset Xin Ling. She laughs in response. Liu Yichen tells Liu Yaxi that if Wang Jian had not vomited blood because of Liu Yaxi, then who would have made such a fuss? Xin Ling hides behind a wall and looks at the guys and says he hopes these reporters won't harass him. Chai Chai writes to Xin Ling that he is a rich uncle. She arrives in Huo Jian at 7 p.m. and asks if he can meet her. Xin Ling read this message with a smile and thinks about what a tool to spend money plus one. He will be looking forward to meeting Chai Chai. In the airport terminal, passengers walk and roll suitcases behind them. Xin Ling looks at her phone, thinking that Chai Chai told him that she had already sat down. He doesn't understand why he can't see her. She could not turn on the filter on the stream, but in life turn out to be an old woman whom he does not recognize. Then he hears some guy talking to the girl, referring to her Chai Chai, and asks her where she is going. He offers to accompany her, he has his own car. Chai Chai tells him that it's not worth it, really it's not worth it. The guy in response asks the question of why excessive politeness. He understands that the girl is Chai Chai. Then he stands between her and the guy and stretches out his hand in defense of the girl, telling the guy that he needs to check his eyes. Did he really not see the expression on her face? The guy in response asks Xin Ling who he is. He after all gave gifts for Chai Chai. Here Chai Chai asks Xin Ling with a smile that he is a rich uncle. His clothes are the same as described in VX and shows him his phone. Xin Ling says it's him. And the guy in shock shouts that he is rich. Xin Ling and Chai Chai leave. And the guy bows his head and says that he apologizes. It looks like they are busy. Chai Chai hugs Xin Ling's hand and says it's good that rich uncle came on time. That guy said he was her fan. And if Xin Ling hadn't approached, it would have been a stranger who would have kidnapped her. To himself, Chai Chai thinks that the guy gave her a gift for a few hundred yuan. And also bought a broken car, thinking that she would go with him. Chai Chai continues to tell Xin Ling with a smile that she always thought that rich uncle was a 40-year-old businessman. She didn't think he was so young and handsome. Xin Ling replies, for her to call him by his first name. He also did not think that she would be more beautiful than on the stream. Chai Chai says with a smile that Xin Ling knows what to say to the girl. Then the system informs him that he can start a counterattack. The TT hobby rate is 30%. Then some guy in a suit raises his hand and calls Chai Chai. With a smile, leading Xin Ling by the arm, she tells the guy, Zhao Zong, where he comes from. She tells the rich uncle that it is Zhao Zong. He sent her quite a few gifts on streams. Zhao Zong says back of course. He came to meet Chai Chai. After all, she herself would never call her brother to give her a ride and immediately asks her who is with her. Chai Chai hugs Xin Ling's hand and says that this is a rich uncle named Beggar. Zhao Zong says he did not think that the sensational rich so young. 
If only he had known before that a rich uncle came for Chai Chai would not embarrass himself with his car for five million. He asks Xin Ling what the rich man drives. Xin Ling replies with a smile that he carries a small scooter. Chai after these words, Chai opens his eyes in shock. Zhao Zong then asks if he can give them a ride. Xin Ling responds well, thanks and that's his bike. They are driving along the road in a car, where a motorcycle is tied on top. Zhao Zong sits behind the wheel and drives a car, thinks that Xin Ling looks no more than 20 and wears clothes that cost several tens of yuan. He wonders if Xin Ling is the rich man who sent over 2,000 gifts. Aloud, Zhao Zong says that such modesty really surprises him. Zhao Zong continues by saying that Chai Chai certainly wouldn't mind riding a scooter, but she has so much luggage with her, so it was more convenient to ride in his car, as they think. Xin Ling thinks that the night views of Huo Zhang are very good. Aloud, Xin Ling tells Zhao Zong that his words are very wise. Chai Chai looks at Xin Ling and wonders if he is really rich. The car stops at the building. Chai Chai enters the room, waves his hand and says hello to everyone. People in the room say that the hero of the occasion has finally arrived. Chai Chai is even more beautiful than when she was last seen here. But she was late. She was punished in three mugs. Chai Chai says, introducing Xin Ling, that this rich uncle is the same guy who made Zhu Xiao leave. Men talk about whether Xin Ling is rich. Is it true? Is the rich man so young? They ask for his mercy. Then Xin Ling realizes that this is how it is. All those excuses and invitations to the bar it's actually a way to bring all the best leopards tusk donators together. This is Chai Chai's Big Daddy Dinner. As a well-known leopard fang streamer, Chai Chai is obviously very smart. Later, everyone sits at the table and eats. One of the men at the table asks Zhao Zong that the rich man has come to meet Chai Chai on a scooter. Someone then laughs, saying that this cannot be. The other man says it must be just a joke. Like someone who sent 2,000 gifts didn't have money for a car. One of the men asks if it's true. If a rich man had enough money for 2,000 gifts, then his income is clearly at least 10 billion. He says that he knows a lot of people in Huo Zhang, and asks the rich man that his name is not Lin. He says with a smile that Lin is not on the lists of the richest people in Huo Jian. After that, another man screams that, so it was true about the car. Zhao Zong yells at Xin Ling that he's a goddamn pretender. He also made him carry his scooter. Another man yells at Chai Chai that she must have been deceived. His neighbor asks Chai Chai if she has seen a photo of the rich man before. TT eats and silently looks at Xin Ling. The degree of her passion is reduced by 10%. She thinks about how she looked at Xin Ling's phone on the way and thinks that he is definitely a beggar. Chai Chai wonders if Xin Ling is still taking revenge on her. Rich people are really all liars and perverts. She is not interested in who he is. The main thing is that the beggar is rich. She hugs Xin Ling, thinking that the main thing is that he has money to donate to her. Chai Chai tells everyone thank you for worrying about her. But isn't the Lin family one of the three richest families in the capital? She asks Xin Ling that he is from the Lin family. He thinks with a smile that Chai Chai is trying to help him, and at the same time wants to know who he really is. Xin Ling brings the glass to his mouth with a smile and the Lin family speaks. He does not know her, but they obviously have less money than him. Then one of the men points his finger at him and laughs, and then says that the boy decided to pretend that he was struck by lightning. He says that he will try to guess that he did not buy those 2,000 gifts. Shuang Shuang must have bought them herself. And then Xin Ling, having failed with Shuang Shuang, decided to deceive Chai Chai. Zhao Zong then speaks exactly, and then use this excuse to deceive Chai Chai and spend the night with her, it's true. Another man tells the rich man that since he says he has more money than the Lin family, would he let me ask? What he usually drives, maybe he hit a couple of wheelbarrows. Xin Ling hugs Chai Chai's shoulder and says that he doesn't have a single car. He asks Chai Chai with a smile what kind of car she likes. He will buy it for her right now. Zhao Zong then stands up and slams his hands on the table, shouting to Xin Ling that he is a little kid and where he put his hand. The other man repeats Xin Ling's words by right now and laughs. Xin Ling seems to think that everything on the street is for sale. The third man says that Xin Ling is a show-off in all his glory. They will bring him to clean water. After all, you can't win wealth. Chai Chai asks Xin Ling if his words are true. She smiles and says thank you to Xin Ling. She likes the Ferrari FA60 better. The system reports that her infatuation rate is minus 15%. She says Xin Ling with a smile. That if he gives her such a car, then she will also give him something. Xin Ling thinks it's strong. Chai Chai is joyful on the outside, but disappointed inside. The show will drive him crazy. Xin Ling gets up and leaves and says okay then. Chai Chai waves his hand to him with a smile. Half an hour later, Chai Chai and all the men who were sitting at the table with her are standing on the porch. Some of them say that this Lin must have chickened out. He is just another freak and after that he offers Chai Chai to sing karaoke. Chai Chai thinks that this Xin Ling is really a liar. And she was even full of hope, hugging him. Aloud, she answers the sentence okay. Here a source of bright light rushes towards them. The men are screaming what's going on. 
This is Xin Ling standing. And next to him are many Ferrari F-60s of different colors parked next to him. Chai Chai and the men around her open their mouths in shock. He tells the men with a smile that he apologizes to the gentlemen for blocking their cars for several thousand yuan. He continues by saying that Niu Zong is such an enthusiast. He said he wanted to buy a car. And he rolled everything at once for Xin Ling to choose. Niu Zong says exactly. Their car service is distinguished by courtesy and efficiency. In addition, Lin Xiao was confirmed with a black diamond card. One of the men opens his mouth in shock, yelling what? But for a black diamond card, the owner's fortune must be at least a billion. It cannot be. These cars are all just for show. But the other man says in response that he knows Niu Zong. He can admire so much for only one reason, that Xin Ling is really rich. Xin Ling approaches Chai Chai and tells her that she is just in time. That Ferrari FA60 she mentioned is worth 15 million yuan. It's too cheap, he can't give it to her. T Chai admiringly repeats that it is too cheap. Xin Ling says that Niu Zong said that if she likes the FA60, then she will like the LF. So he decided to take the lead and bought the LF. Niu Zong tells Xin Ling that he has 32 million yuan. Xin Ling brings the card to the terminal in the hands of Niu Zong. Chai Chai is shocked to think that Xin Lai actually bought a Ferrari LF for more than 30 million yuan. A man in shock stand and look behind it. One of them shouts that Xin Ling spent more than 30 million and paid everything in full. In two days, Xin Ling spent more than 50 million and this is just his pocket money. Xin Ling's wealth is too great. Someone says hell, and they just mocked him. Another man yells at Chi Zong to speak for himself. If he does not know, then there is nothing to pretend and incite others. He scared them all. Niu Zong asks Xin Ling that he bought this for a girl and maybe then he will buy another one. Xin Ling says no. It was the most expensive car in their fleet. He is going to buy more expensive. Niu Zong says he sincerely apologizes. He disappointed Xin Ling. Chai Chai leans against his car with a smile. She thanks Xin Ling, saying that she always dreamed of driving a Ferrari LF. She never thought. Xin Ling doesn't let her finish, saying that everything is fine. He still has so much money that he needs to spend it somewhere. The system reports that Chai Chai's engagement increased by 50% after these words. She thinks about how Xin Ling didn't take advantage of the situation and didn't demand anything from her in return. He didn't even give in to her. The man approaches Xin Ling and bows to him, saying that there was just a misunderstanding. They acted like blind men and dared to doubt his power. They sincerely apologized to the rich man. Xin Ling asks yes. One of the men says it is. He also heard that Xin Ling would like to buy a more expensive car. His obedient servant has just the largest fleet of vehicles in Huajong. There are cars much better than Niu Zong's, although the man is not sure if they deserve Xin Ling's attention. But if he comes to see, he will give him a big discount as an apology. Chai Chai puts his arm around Xin Ling's shoulder, telling her that she wants to try out the car and asking him if he would like to join her. Xin Ling asks her if she can go by herself. Chai Chai tells Xin Ling in her ear that she's made up her mind. Thank you for expensive gifts. Xin Ling widens his eyes in surprise. Chai Chai continues by telling him that only now his gift is too big and she won't be able to fully thank him. So can he give her an installment plan? She would make the first payment at a place where they would be alone. Xin Ling thinks it's no wonder that Chai Chai earns so much from streaming. She awakened his curiosity. The two of them leave in a car, leaving the men standing outside. Xin Ling and Chai Chai are speeding through the city at night in a new car. Chai Chai holds out a pen to Xin Ling and asks if he can write a signature on her stem. Xin Ling lifts the hem of her skirt and notices the elastic with a heart there. Xin Ling's eyes widen in shock. He lifts his skirt up and sees that it says rich uncle, forgive me. Chai Chai says this is one of her thanks. Every time she thanks him, he can leave a note. She asks Xin Ling if he is satisfied. He replies that it suits him. They arrive at Bar Carlton. Chai Chai goes live, greeting everyone and saying that she is in Huajong. Unexpectedly for her. The rich man bought her a car without further ado, she is so touched. People are shocked because they recognize the brand of the car and its cost. While Chai Chai is recording a video on the hood, a man next to her tells Xin Ling that there is a wealthy club in Huajong. It includes the richest people, they really hope to get to know him. Xin Ling says okay, the man can add it. He in response thanks the rich man, saying that he is very flattered. Just then, the phone in Xin Ling's pocket rings. He picks up the phone. He is told that they have just received a message. The 11th grade students from their school organized an alumni reunion tomorrow. It will take place just in Huajong, and since he is studying there, he may come. Xin Ling replies that he will come, he still has nothing to do. The speaker adds that, as Yixuan says, the beauty from the literary class will also come. Xin Ling thinks of Xia Yixuan with a smile. Even though she is a classmate, they never spoke. All he knows about her is that she is very rich. Xin Ling says well, he will definitely come to meet you. 
During the day, Sin Ling goes on a motorcycle and looks at the huge building and says that this five-star bar is mere. It looks so rich. There are some guys shouting to Xin Ling that they are here. He sees them and says to Lao Lai and Xiao Zhang, and asks them where the parking is. They answer that they do not know, because they came on foot. Here, the motorcycle under Xin Ling makes a strange sound and emits gases. Xin Ling gets off him in anger and kicks him, screaming why he broke again. He remembers how Zhao Zong took his motorcycle and hugs him to him, says that it is a great honor to ride in a rich man's car. He asks that the rich man is also a student, he is so modest. Zhao Zong says he will look forward to the next chance to collaborate with Xin Ling. He replies in shock, thank you. Chai Chai blows a kiss to Xin Ling and says she has to go to a photo shoot. She will come for him when the time is right. Xin Ling angrily says that Zhao Zong must have broken his motorcycle yesterday. You should ask for a refund. Lai Oh Lai, hearing this, thinks that Zhao Zong must be some worker. A beautiful black car is parked nearby, driven by a guy in sunglasses. He says classmates have not seen each other for a long time. Someone shouts Liang and long time no see Liang. This is Feng Billion. He takes off his glasses and asks Xin Ling with a smile that his car broke down. He replies yes, last night. Feng Billying presses his hand to his eyes and laughingly says that it is his fault. There is no parking sword for scooters at the Meriden Bar. It's just that when he was choosing a place for a meeting, he did not expect that someone would arrive on a scooter. Next time he will definitely take it into account. The bar worker catches Feng Billion's car keys and says welcome. Some guy says it's probably worth a few million to park a car here for that amount of time. Then the girl tells him that doesn't he know that Xin Ling owns a Meriden. The guy replies that he knew that Lion was rich, but did not know that he was that rich. The construction of the Meriden cost more than 300 million. Feng Biliang, not only rich but also noble, was worried about Xin Ling. No one compares to Feng Biliang. Xin Ling tells everyone to go and he will find a place to park. Xin Ling rolls his scooter. Then Lio Yasi calls him and asks where he is. She asks Xin Ling if they can go and eat together today. Xin Ling replies that he won't come out today. He's at the reunion right now, so better tomorrow. Lyo Yaxi says that tomorrow is also possible, but in two days she will not be able to. Xin Ling thinks about what this means and what her health is like. He tells Lyo Yaxi not to forget to drink warm water. The system reports that Lyo Yaxi's engagement has increased by 2%. She answers well. The system reports that Luo Yaxi's infatuation rate has increased by 2% to 91%, and the counterattack level has been passed. 11,359,800 yuan was spent on Liu Yasi, and the 10% refund of 1,135,980 yuan has already been transferred to his personal account. Xin Ling thinks with a smile that someone said that it is useless to remind about warm water, didn't that work? But he still spent very little, only 11,300,000, he should spend more on counterattacks. The system reports that as a reward all characteristics have increased by one level. He can also receive one skill as a reward. The system reports that strength, agility, stamina and intelligence have increased to level 2. Xin Ling feels a surge of warmth, and it's very nice. He decides to choose a skill and choose something amazing. The system reports that two skills are available to him. He is asked to choose before the time runs out. Pick time, 7 hours, 59 minutes and 59 seconds. Class a skill, respect for cultural heritage. Class C skill, 5 electric whips. Class D skill, rap. Xin Ling screams in shock that it is here. They are useless. Xin Ling thinks about what doesn't matter. First he goes to the meeting. He decides it's time for him to buy himself a car. But he cannot spend the counterattack budget on himself. Xin Ling enters the room where the table is set. Xin Ling walks up to the table and pushes back his chair and asks if Zi Yixuan hasn't come yet. Feng Biliang asks Xin Ling what does he care. He continues by saying that Zi Yixuan is a literature class student and her family is not a simple one, but Xin Ling. He asks that Zi Yixuan's family is very rich. The guy next to him replies to Xin Ling that it's no wonder he doesn't know. Zi Yixuan has an intelligent family and very strict rules, so she doesn't talk about it. He also found out about this recently. Her family opened a city museum. Someone hearing this comments that Zi Yixuan's family is very wealthy. The girl at the table leans back in her chair with a smile and says that this is why Xin Ling and Zi Yixuan are on completely different levels. Do I need to tell him that only Mr. Lion has enough money to look after her? The other girl supports her, saying that she thinks so too. Xin Ling holds out a OOO, holding a glass of wine in his hand. Then Zia Yixion walks in and asks for forgiveness, saying that she was stuck in traffic. Xin Ling thinks about how beautiful she is even without makeup. The system evaluates her appearance at 94 points. Xin Ling thinks it's great. The system scores are so high. Feng Biliang invites Zia Yixuan to sit next to him. Xin Ling tells Yixuan that there is also an empty seat next to him. She sits next to him, saying that they haven't seen each other for a long time. 
Xin Ling tells her that he thought she forgot his name. Xia Yixuan replies that she remembers the names of everyone in her class. The degree of her passion for him is 0%. Everyone is in shock thinking about how Xin Ling dares to sit next to the queen of the school. Feng Biliang thinks about how damned Xin Ling is and how dare he. Here he calls Xin Ling. Feng Bilian says he heard that Xin Ling has been dating a college girl for three years and asks why he didn't bring her here. Everyone would like to meet her. Xin Ling replies that they broke up the day before yesterday. Feng Biliang asks how they broke up after Xin Ling chased after her for three years. He continues by saying come on. He only says that because he needs Zi Yixuan. One of the girls says that only fools can be deceived by such lies. She tells Xin Ling that this is so ugly. She considered him an honest man, but even after college, he would become a scumbag. Xin Ling replies that he is just telling the truth. Zia Yusin's infatuation rate dropped by 1%. Xin Ling doesn't know what to do. Feng Bilnir realizes that this is his chance. He says that he heard that Zia Yixuan is interested in artifacts. He recently bought a late Da Vinci Mario from a Shanghai collector. He asks Zia Yixuan if she wants to take a look. She gets up and goes to the painting, and Feng Bilnir follows her. And along the way, he puts his hand on his shoulder and says to Xin Ling, addressing him as a beggar so that he knows his place. If Xin Ling tried to suck up to Zia Yixuan one more time, he would make it impossible for Zia Yixuan to find a job in Huojiang even after graduation. He approaches Zia Yixuan and tells her that she has no idea how much he likes this painting. In a few days, an auction will be held in the city where another painting will be sold, the blessing of the angels. Zia Yixuan tells Feng Biling that she did not know that he was interested in Renaissance artists. She asks if she can take a closer look. He says yes please. She can consider. Feng Biliang thinks to himself that it worked. It took him a lot of time and effort to learn Zia Yixuan's hobbies. Although this is nothing special. Xin Ling says he is also interested in Da Vinci paintings. He asks if they can look at the painting together. The system reports that the artifact assessment skill is selected. Feng Biliang says yes of course with a smile. But thinks to himself that Xin Ling is a fool and will dishonor himself. Zia Yixuan wonders if Xin Ling also likes Da Vinci. Feng Biliang asks Xin Ling if he would like to share his opinion. He wonders what he thinks about this picture. Xin Ling says it's fake. He continues by saying that in his later work, Da Vinci favored the technique of fine repainting. A small amount of pigment and a large amount of castor oil were used to make the paint. Each stroke has a translucent effect. The colors in this painting are opaque due to too much pigment. In addition, Da Vinci liked to shade the corners of the eyes and mouths of figures in order to achieve an infinitely gentle and soft effect. Xin Ling continues by adding that the tapering method is a bit harsh. Zia Yixuan looks at Xin Ling in shock. He tells Feng Biliang that, unfortunately, this Maria is a fake. He bought a fake. At that from a rage and a shock the eye begins to twitch. Feng Biliang says that a non-professional would probably believe his words, but he is not like that. And he immediately sees that he picked up some half-destitute expert skills on the internet. Others think that Feng Bilian is right and Xin Ling should be stopped. Then Zia Yixuan walks past him. She says she also studied Da Vinci paintings and Xin Ling is right. This is a really high quality imitation. Everyone is shocked, opening their mouths and screaming. Zia Yixuan turns her head towards Xin Ling and asks how Xin Ling got such expert knowledge. Xin Ling replies that since childhood, he learned a lot to appreciate cultural relics and art objects, as he was very hurt that foreign countries deprived their country of so many cultural values. His goal is to buy back all the artifacts and return them to their country. Feng Biliang then starts laughing and says that he almost believes him. He really thinks that he will be able to redeem all the artifacts and return them. Xin Ling replies that as long as he has a certain amount of money, there is nothing that he cannot buy. Everyone starts laughing at him after these words. Zia Yixuan says that in childhood he had the same unrealistic dreams. The degree of her passion increased by 5%. Xin Ling tells her that the dream statement is too far away. It's just a goal that he will definitely achieve. Feng Biliang thinks angrily. Damn Xin Ling. Somehow dared to show off in front of him and try to steal Zia Yixuan from him. He decides that it is worth showing the poor man his rightful place. Food is brought to the table. Tuscan salad, Brussels chocolate souffle, Canadian veal shank with seasonal vegetables, simmered, Andean venison with salad and spices. The people at the table talk admiringly about how delicious it smells. They had never eaten such sumptuous food before. They wonder why all dishes are different. Feng Biliang replies with a smile that he does not know. The chef himself decides what to serve. It's just that his chef used to work in a three-star Michelin restaurant and therefore he has a bit of character, so it all depends on his mood when cooking. Here he says that it looks like Xin Ling is out of luck. They brought him a stinky bun and the same pieces of salad. Xin Ling talks about it being a steamed bun and what's going on here. Feng Bilner replies that it might be molecular cuisine. 
All those Michelin-starred chefs on the internet love to cook things like strawberry longans. Xin Ling pricks a piece of bun on his fork and thinks that, as expected, these are regular steamed buns and zucchini. There is nothing surprising in this. He knew that Feng Biliang would come up with something like that. Feng Biliang asks Xin Ling with a smile what it is, like steamed buns from a Michelin-starred chef. If he does not like it, he will order the chef to remove the dish and prepare a new one. But the dishes from the chef are very high quality. They take 1 minutes 2 hours to prepare. The girl sitting next to him says that to try the Michelin chef's dishes, it's definitely worth waiting 2 hours. Feng Biliang says that if Xin Ling doesn't wait, he won't be able to go to karaoke on an empty stomach and starts laughing. The girl responds by saying that what's next karaoke and it's great. But Feng Biliang looks on in shock as Xin Ling talks to Zia Yixuan. Xin Ling tells her that the pattern on the sides of the gold mask's nose is both for aesthetics and to eliminate wrinkles. The wisdom of the ancients never ceases to amaze him. Zia Yixuan's infatuation rate is increased by 2%. She tells Xin Ling that she thinks his experience is almost equal to her teacher's. Next time, Xin Ling could join them and they would appreciate some artifacts together. Feng Biliang is in complete shock. Then a notification arrives on Xin Ling's phone that Zhao Zong invites him to join the Princely Millions group. Xin Ling thinks about being invited by Zhao Zong last night to join Huojian's rich group. Xin Ling opens the group, reads the dialogue in it, and thinks about that maybe he should send a welcome gift. Xin Ling thinks that since he cannot spend money on a man, he will find a girl. Then he notices a girl in the group who seems pretty to him. He sends 18,880,000 yen to a smiling Yongbu. He writes that he can't send a big red envelope so he just wired him the money. This is her tea. This causes shock and admiration among the other members of the group. Here, users ask Xin Ling where he is now and if he wants to go to the Merida. Xin Ling replies that he is right there now, and all the members of the group, who are also there or nearby, are going to come to him. Feng Bilian, who invited the rich man to the Merida, writes to him that he is the young owner of the Merida and gives his first and last name. He will pay for everything that he spends today in his bar. He can buy everything, what he wants. Xin Ling with a smile answers him no. What is he writing? It's not worth spending so much money. To himself, Xin Ling thinks about what a coincidence this is. Feng Bilian, under the name of a high-ranking prince, answers him that this is not even discussed. He is a hospitable person, that's all. Feng Bilian looks at Xin Ling with an evil smile and thinks that this is over now. He knows a lot of powerful rich people and has now made even more connections. He decides that when the rich come, he just needs to complain to them about him. He imagines how he tells the rich that it is worth drinking, showing discontent with his appearance. Some of them will ask why Mr. Feng is in a bad mood, and he will answer this that just one brainless fool does not give him rest. Everyone around immediately begins to ask who this bastard is. How dare he offend Mr. Fen? The rich man will tell Xin Ling, who is crying and lying on the floor, that he will make sure that he cannot stay in Huajiang. Others support him, saying that they will help too. They'll tell human resources to shut down Xin Ling. Feng Biliang thinks with a smile that this way he can meet a new rich man, humiliate Xin Ling, and show off his rich friends in front of Zia Yixuan. He will kill three birds with one stone. How smart he is. Feng Biliang stands up and asks if everyone has already eaten properly. He invites everyone to go to the karaoke room on the top floor. He arranged a meeting with some of the rich people of this city so that they can communicate with the upper class people. Everyone is shocked as they didn't know that Feng Biliang had such connections. He is very hot. They all descend into the Hall of Golden Splendor. They all go down there and settle down on big couches. Feng Bilian welcomes his wealthy guests. Those who came with him think that Feng Bilian is so handsome. It feels like they are from different worlds. One of the guys says that Feng Bilian brought them to meet famous people. From now on, he will spend more time with Lion. Feng Bilian introduces Zia Yixuan, the main property owner in Huo Zhao, Mr. Xu. And he also introduces her to Mr. Xu. When he hears about the Zia family, he says he knew her father. Zia Yixuan, holding a glass in her hand, says hello. The man continues by saying that he heard that Ms. Zia is very beautiful, and that's true. Then a worker approaches Feng Biliang, who asks for forgiveness and begins to say something to him. The worker points to Xin Ling and says to Feng Biliang that his classmate would like to order a bottle of Aurora Rouso Sherry. He's not sure if he should open the bottle for him. Feng Biliang asks Xin Ling if he really wants to order a bottle of Aurora Rouso Sherry wine. All their classmates are shocked. They say that Xin Ling has gone mad. This wine is worth thousands of dollars. Feng Biliang treated them to dinner and karaoke for their old classmates. Xin Ling is not going to order such expensive wine at his expense. It's just some kind of misunderstanding. Xin Ling obviously doesn't know how expensive this wine is. The same one says with a smile that he really wants to order this wine. And he continues, saying that it's okay one of his rich acquaintances will pay for it. Feng Biliang asks really, 
It turns out that Xin Ling says that he has such an acquaintance. He allows in this case to open the bottle. Xin Ling thinks to himself that this is his chance. The waiter opens the wine, and people think that Xin Ling really has such connections. Feng Biling stands over Xin Ling and holds up the bottle, yelling that Carmel Aurora Russo Sherry costs 250,000 per bottle. It is already open, so it's too late to regret it. If the magnate's friend Xin Ling can't pay, he'll have to repay by mining coal. His uncle is the owner of a coal company, so he can definitely find a place for him. Xin Ling says 250,000. He really doesn't understand why. Xin Ling thinks to himself that he expected that the longer the name, the more expensive the price. Feng Biliang says that Xin Ling will be more attentive when his hands get dirty, and then he will think more before buying something. Feng Biliang asks about how everyone is almost here. Didn't the rich man say that he would be in Meridi? Why isn't he here yet? Here someone says that the rich man wrote in the group that he was already in the Golden Splendor Hall. Feng Bilian is shocked and says that he is already here. Then Zhao Zong comes in, who says that it looks like he is the last one. Feng Bilian walks towards him and holds out his hand, but Zhao Zong runs past him, ignoring him. He rushes to Xin Ling and shakes his hand with a smile and says that he wants to hug the rich man. It turns out that Xin Ling arrived a long time ago and he had to wait for him. All people in shock after these words look at them. They start shouting at the same time Mr. Rich Man. Is Xin Ling really the rich man? Xia Yixuan does not understand what is happening. Feng Biliang yells no, this can't be. Xin Ling tells him that he can. This is really him. Everyone immediately approaches Xin Ling and he becomes the center of attention. All classmates are shocked by this and actively discuss the events. Feng Biliang shouts that it is impossible. He doesn't know what Xin Ling is up to, but he just fooled everyone here. He knows Xin Ling's parents, they only work part-time, and he is just a poor dog. Xin Ling can't possibly be a rich man. Zhao Zong yells at Feng Biliang to shut his mouth immediately and adds that he is the worst of all in this group, the most uneducated and incapable who spends nothing but hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. He lost money in stocks without making a dime. It's a shame for their group. Zhao Zong yells at Feng Biliang how dare he scold Mr. Lin. They decide to kick Feng Biliang out of the princely millions. Xin Ling says that everything is fine. And besides, Feng said that he will pay all his expenses for today. He tells the bartender to serve the most expensive drinks to everyone in the room. Let them drink and order as much as they want. Feng Billion is defeated.